here's a segment from a recent Gun Talk radio episode. You can listen to all the Gun Talk radio podcasts however you tune in, or check out guntalk.com for more. We got uh, Aaron Elger just joined us uh, from Hodgson. Uh, Aaron, I appreciate you being with us. The funny part is, well, before you came on here, I'm talking with Jason, and he said, Oh, yeah, I just got some of that Stay Ball 6.5 powder. Hey, Aaron, how you doing? Hey, I'm great. How are you guys doing? We're we're having a ball. We're having a good time. Yeah, I mean, so uh, so you just got some of the powder. Yeah, I just oh. picked some up uh, two weeks ago. Oh, okay. So and, and Aaron, I I saw this. Uh, I mean, first of all, we ought to explain. You're with Hodgson. Hodgson's like the the powder company now. It really has become the place you go for pretty much any kind of reloading powder, hasn't it? That's correct. We have several brands under the Hodgson umbrella. So certainly Hodgson's there. IMR. Uh, accurate ramshot are all brands that we own and we license winchester um as well so right. winchester is a, is a hodgson brand uh, that we sell and we introduced uh the new stable 65 powder a couple years ago now mm-hmm. exactly for that you know 6 to 65 creed more type burn speed and it's been incredibly popular it's something that uh, that we've gotten a lot a lot of interest in well, as I've been looking at, and I have spent an inordinate amount of time on the Hodgson website, Hodgson.com, looking at the load data and everything else, uh, and it looks to me like, at least in certain calibers, the ones that are just right for this powder, you could get 100 to 150 feet per second more velocity with Stayball 6.5 than you can with some of the other powders. Yeah, that's exactly right. We have found that uh, when we were doing our initial testing, when we were developing that powder, uh, we had the same uh, we have had the same results in our ballistics labs. So, it, it not only is it very uh, very efficient, but it's also very effective. So, pretty cool, pretty cool powder that we introduced. It has another benefit or characteristic that I think a lot of people may not pay a lot of attention to. You might talk about the temperature stability. Yeah, so that is something that is important. If you're if you're shooting, uh, a lot of us shoot all year round, and especially if you're a hunter, uh, this really comes into uh, an issue. But if you're shooting PRS, we've seen a lot of uh, feedback from our PRS friends as well. In that, if you're shooting in the summertime and you're shooting out and it's 100 degrees, and then uh, you're shooting in the fall or the winter, when you can see a you know 50, 60, 70 degree swing in temperatures. This powder will perform pretty much the same way, no matter what the temperature swing is. So we've mm-hmm. seen a lot of other uh, powders that uh, that we have used in the past and extremely popular powders today. Right. They don't have that temperature stability, and so that ends up um, affecting your um, your feet per second. So it's a velocity, um, and that can affect you, especially if you're shooting at long range for somebody like a precision rifle shooter. So temperature is really important, and that's something mm-hmm. that uh, – that we're they were excited to include that with the six huh. five, six five stable. You know, and probably um, until at least a few years ago, a decade or so ago, people weren't doing the long range shooting that's so popular now, Jason. And so right. you know, um, maybe we didn't pay as much attention because you said, well, yeah, it's, that's a hundred, hundred fifty feet per second drop in velocity. You go, well. You know, at 300 yards, who cares? But if you're shooting uh, a target at 700, 800, 900 yards, Aaron, that, that can really make a difference. Yeah, it absolutely can. And, you know, we want to be careful with that, too. We, we have a lot of hunters out there, and we have a lot of hunters using this powder. And I know everybody's really sensitive about shooting game at long distance. And right. we want to put that caveat in there, right, that, that we want to make sure people are making ethical shots on game. So we're not endorsing people going out and using this powder to increase their um, their distance right. that they're shooting at hunting animals. But for, for target shooting, for PRS, for anything along those lines, that's uh, something that is right in the wheelhouse of Stable 65. What's real important too, Tom, is a lot of the uh, optics now have dials that are cut specific for loads. Right. You know, I know loophole with the CDS system, and there's tons of those out there, or or even your ballistic calculators. You know, so if you if that velocity is changing, once that velocity changes on that dial, that that data yeah. is not correct. The trajectory's anymore. off. Aaron, there's something else here. And if you you talk about you know you work up your loads at you know 90 or 100 degrees, but if we go the other way, say you go out and work up max loads at 30 degrees or 20 degrees, it's really cold, and then you go out and hunt pronghorn and it's 90 or 100 degrees, you could actually conceivably end up with excess pressure with some powders, couldn't you? 
Absolutely. Yeah, that would be a big issue too, Tom. So we want to make sure that people are aware of that. And uh, again, that's the nice thing about using Stable 65 is you don't have to worry about that scenario. Okay, here comes the hard question. This is the curveball coming your way. Where the heck is all the powder, dude? <laughs> that's a good question. So, so I'll tell you this. I get this question an awful lot, and people are always wondering where the powder is. I think the answer is this, that the situation that we've seen for the last, call it 18 months, um, uh, probably 21 months now, is that we don't really have a supply issue. Our, our supply, we're supplying way more powder this year than last year, mm -hmm. and more powder last year than the previous three years. So we're supplying, uh, it is not a supply issue, it's a demand issue. So yes. we, we put what we put product on our website. We, we sell a very small amount of powder through our website for customers who are looking. If we put something on our website, it's gone in a matter of hours, if not minutes. Right. When we ship to our big wholesalers or our big re internet retail customers, they're reporting to us that their supply, when they put it on the web or when they put it on the store shelf, it's gone in a matter of hours, if not minutes. So we're definitely in a situation, we've seen it with ammunition, we've seen it with powder, we've seen it with primers and other reloading components, just an extremely high level of demand right now. And we understand that, and that's why we're trying to get as much powder out there. You know, believe me, I, I don't just do the marketing side, I also do the sales side at Hodgson. Right. I'm a gunpowder salesman. I want to sell gunpowder <laughs> because that is my job. And so for me, when I hear people that say they can't find it, that that's that's hard for me to hear, right? Because I'm a gunpowder salesman. I want everybody to buy my powder. So right, right. That's something we're working really hard at, and we're getting supply out there. We've just never seen demand at this level, especially that's sustained over almost a two-year period now. Well, it's interesting you say that. I mean, and the, the point I want people to get from that is you're not making less powder. There's not less powder. There's actually more powder available now than there ever has been. It's just that there are far more people. And we were talking a little bit earlier about, you know, you've got so many more hunters, so many more people coming in. And one of the influences, I swear I think this is an important thing, you got people like Steve Ronella who have, you know, a meat eaters, got a huge following. You've got Joe Rogan talking about hunting. And I don't know, you know, Typically, we've always said there were like 15 million hunters, ballpark. Well, if you added a million or two million to that, the percentage increase is huge. And that's a whole bunch of new people who want ammo, who want guns, who are wanting powder, and wanting primers. That is a massive increase in demand. Yeah, it absolutely is. And, you know, look, for example, we, we also are in the muzzle loading area, and that's there's similarities there right. to the smokeless side as well. And right now, you know, everybody who goes out and buys a CDA Paramount, for example, is looking for Blackhorn 2 and I. And they're selling an awful lot of those Paramount rifles. And so if you look at how much demand for Blackhorn 209, uh, which is a muzzleloader propellant is right now, mm -hmm. it's, it's light years beyond where we were five years ago. So it's not just we've got to keep up with the demand. You got to keep up with the demand for all of the new people coming in who are buying new equipment, yes. and they're looking yeah. for muzzleloader propellant or smokeless propellant or other reloading components. Components demand we've just never seen anything like this before. Well, and it's that old deal of look. If you go online and they don't have it, and they have a, a back order deal, do the back order. If they have a thing you can click on, it says notify me when it's available. Notify me, and then when it's time to buy it. Don't just put it in your cart and come think you can come back tomorrow right. and think it's going to be there because it's not going to be there. I mean, when you get it, put it in the cart and finish the sale and buy it because, like you say, Aaron, it's it's now not a matter of days but hours or even minutes sometimes. It is. But, you know, if you, I think the situation is slowly changing. If you go in, I was at some uh, retail stores in the last 30 days, last couple of weeks even, mm -hmm. and just checking to see. And there, are, there is now powder on the, on the shelves. I even saw some primers available, uh, which I purchased because you always should. <laughs> you um, dog. <laughs> so, yeah, I, you know, for somebody like me who shoots, I, I don't shoot as much as I'd like to, but I probably, um, I, I probably do shoot quite a bit. And I'm always needing stuff like that, right? So I, I see it available. I'm going to buy it exactly like you said. Right. No, it, it, it's where we are. It's what we do here. You know, uh, if they want to know more about uh, all the different powders you have, is this still the best place, just the Hodgson uh, website? It is. I, I would recommend HodgsonReloading.com. That's our website where we have all of our data. So you can go and research particular powders. You can find out suggested starting loads, max loads. All of that information is there. 
HodgdonReloading.com. And, and I'm just going to tell you, I mean, I have literally been spending hours over there because I've got a couple of rifles I'm working on. i got a new 284 on order. It's like, it's weird. I mean, it's so weird that I was looking at the uh, nozzle manual. They took it out of their loading manual. It's so unpopular <laughs> these days. It's like it's not even there anymore. But fortunately, Hodgson still has the data for it on the website. We do, and we're shooting data all the time. We have two ballistics labs. We have a couple. Uh, we have a full staff in both, and we're shooting data all the time. Whenever that data is shot, we'll get it loaded to the website as quick as we can. Very cool. Well, look, thank you so much for sharing with us what's going on these days, and also telling people about the uh, the six five stay ball. That that's a very cool powder, man. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on.